right, we are ready to get started. We're going to warm up with the next in the set of core fluency practices. It is in your Starry Night book. Woo! On page number 79, it is missing add-in practice. Missing add-in, which means one of the parts is missing. So we're still adding, but we're missing a part. So we're going to put 90 seconds on the clock. And unlike yesterday, I figured out what was wrong, or actually where they moved it to. Because what happened was, see what happened was, they updated the app. And in updating the app, they moved the button. But I found it. So we're going to put 90 seconds on the clock, which I know where it is. All right. On your mark, get set, go. Tiny bell. I know you heard it. I heard it. That means stop. Let's go ahead and check our work and see how we did. Come on. All right. Let's check our work. Starting at the top. Question number one. Zero. Six. One. Two. Seven. One. Six. One. Seven, two. All right, top of column two, question number 11. Three plus blank is equal to six. The missing part is three. Four, five, four, two, three, four, two, three, Four, the top of column three, question number 21. The answer is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, six, five, six. Great work. Come on, let's take a quick look at question number 11, 12, and 13. What do you notice about these three problems? What's happening here? You got it. These are doubles. There is the same part two times to make the whole. Three and three, four and four, and five and five. Great work. Write the number of problems you finished the bottom and followed by the number you got correct. And let's go ahead and continue with our lesson. Right, Come on! We're going to continue with our application problem, which, like all application problems, lives in our learn book. Today's problem is on page number 145. So, in the book, 145 looks like this. Don't worry about this part down here. I'm going to read this part to you, like always. And then I'm going to give you a good clean shot because the video will prompt you to answer the question. It says, 
A dog hides 11 bones behind his doghouse. Later, his owner gives him five more bones. How many bones does the dog have now? Use the RDW process to share your thinking as you solve the problem. Remember, RDW, read, draw, write. Or as I like to name it, reread, draw, and label, write numbers and words. So you gotta do all the pieces. <laughs> so work on this for about three minutes and then continue with the video because yes, it's gonna, I'll keep doing that because that's where the question pops up and it's gonna ask you, it's gonna just ask you, how many bones does the dog have now? Let's go ahead and see how we did this. Okay, so for this problem, what we see here is a tape diagram drawing. Tape diagram showing the 11 bones behind his doghouse and the five more bones he received from his owner. Putting those parts together, we get that he had 16 bones. The dog had 16 bones. The ones behind the dog has, they're his, they're not gone. It's just this part is grouped together. Okay, now let's look at what we're working on today. Today we are going to be adding numbers, sometimes a two digit plus a two digit, sometimes a two digit plus a one. No, it's all two digit plus two digit. So a two digit number, tens and ones, like this, 24, plus a two digit number, tens and ones, like 13. We're going to add them together. We're going to break apart one of the numbers into smaller pieces, then we will add the tens and then add the ones. In this case, today what we see is that when we add the ones, it won't make another group of ten. So in this picture here, what we see happening is we see two tens, they move the third ten over, and then added the three ones to the four ones. So three ones and four ones, two tens and one ten, putting tens and ones together. See here we see two tens and four ones. We added the other group of ten. We still need to add the three ones. So what is my solution? Thirty-seven. Good job. Thirty-seven. Now that's the picture version. That's the picture version. We also have the number version of this answer, which is breaking it apart into tens and ones. Adding the group of ten, and then adding the remaining ones. Because see, look, when I write it here, instead of just writing four and three, I wrote the whole 34, I'm sorry, the bigger part, and then all I'm doing is changing, adding more ones. Like I said, today's problems we won't create another group of 10 in the ones. So when we're adding it, you just need to work on the second step. You just need to worry about what's in the ones column. And you'll see the way it's set up in your book. Several of the problems have two number sentences set up for you to work with. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Hold on. So I'm going to show it to you in the homework book because this is what I want you grabbing right now anyway. To turn to page 100 so we can do these problems together. Okay, so... Page 100 is the back side. And I intentionally picked the ones that aren't started for you because we're doing them together. And if you need additional practice, you see how this one is started for you? They've already chosen which part to break into smaller pieces. And they've set you up for the two number sentence. The first number sentence is you adding the 10 from the, from the smaller pieces and then adding the ones to get your whole. Adding the 10s and then adding the ones. So for this number here, page number 100 in your homework book, you know because this is written in red, that is our visual cue that I want the book with the red trim. All right, so we have letter C, 15 plus 14. What we're going to do, we're going to break the smaller part 
Actually, not the smaller part. Let's double check. Let me look at this real quick. Yes, we're going to break the smaller part into pieces, grouping the tens and the ones. The tens and the ones. So if I break 14 into smaller pieces, what are my pieces? Good job. 10 and 4 are my pieces. 10 and 4 are my pieces. Good. So, like we just said, we're going to make two number sentences. The first number sentence will be adding the 10. Adding the 10. So, writing the untouched part, which was 15, and then adding the 10s from the second part, we are given. Notice what's happening here. We said that this is, me dropping things again. We said that ugh, this is 15. 15 is this part. That is that whole part. We did nothing to it. We left it alone. We're not, when we add 10, I made no change to my ones. My ones are untouched. So even though I wrote 15, the only change I'm making is in the tens column. Look. See? 110 plus 110 is two tens. Now, my ones are unbothered. They're unchanged. There's still five of them. They're minding their business. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a note here by underlining where we made the change. We said 110 plus 110 equals two tens. And right now my ones are unbothered. Right now my ones have been unbothered. But I do need to put them, I do need to now bother them so that I can find my hole. So... From where I added my tens, we will now add the ones. We will now add the ones. Now, five ones plus four ones is equal to, five ones plus four ones is equal to nine ones. Good. It is equal to nine ones, but... I can't just leave those two tens. Just because they're unbothered doesn't mean they're not there. They're just because they're unbothered doesn't mean they're not there. My two tens stayed the same. So, looking back at my original problem, 15 plus 14 is equal to 29. What we're doing, I said again, break apart the smaller part into pieces, add the tens. Add the ones. Find the whole. So 24 and 15. The smaller part is 15. We're going to break that into tens and ones. Within the number 15 exists one group of 10, which has a value of 10, and five loose ones. We're now going to add the group of 10 to the larger part. So 24 being the larger part, plus the group of 10 that was in 15 is what? What is 24 plus an additional group of 10? If I start with, not dropping everything, please don't drop everything this time. If I start with the larger part, 24, and I add an additional group of 10, notice my 1 still unbothered. I'm making a change in the 10s column. What is 24 plus, what is 24 plus another group of 10s? 34, correct. Good, 34. What is happening? What is happening again? I am losing markers. Here it is. What's happening again? I am making changes in the tens. My ones are currently unbothered. But I'm not done. 
because now I need to bother the ones. I need to bother with the ones. I need to add the remaining pieces. I need to take my new larger part because I put the group of 10 with the bigger part and I need to add my remaining ones. I need to add my remaining ones. So four ones plus five ones is equal to nine ones. Did anything happen here in the tens place? No, no change was made in the tens place. That means it stays the same. Three tens plus zero tens is equal to three tens. So looking back, 24 plus 15 is equal to 39. 24 plus 15 is equal to 39. Let's keep going. Reading letter E. Reading letter E, we have 22 plus 17 is equal to blank. Which of these parts do I need to break into smaller pieces? Remember, we're not looking we're not looking at which one is closer to a group of 10. We want to break apart, which, we want to break whichever part is smaller. So I ask again, which part do I need to break into smaller pieces, 22 or 17? 17, good, it is 110. And seven ones. One, ten, and seven ones. And we're going to, as we have done, add the tens and then add the ones. So in adding the tens, we're going to take the untouched part. We're going to take the untouched part. We're going to add to it. Another group of 10, another group of 10. So you mean to tell me two tens plus one 10 is equal to three tens. My ones remain unbothered. These two ones have been chilling this whole time because nothing happened in that column. Nothing happened. But that doesn't mean we leave it blank because those two are still there, minding their business, waiting their turn. Now it's their turn. We're going to take the larger part and start another number sentence, adding together the ones. How many ones do I need to add? Seven, good, seven. So two ones, plus seven ones is equal to how many ones? Is equal to how many ones? Nine ones, good. Is that it, am I done? No, because there's still three tens. Just because they didn't do anything right now doesn't mean they went away. It is three tens and nine ones. Meaning 22 plus 17 is equal to 39. 22 plus 17 is equal to 39. All right, let's do one more. We're going to do one more together. And that is 27 plus 12. I know my hands are full, but it's okay. Put that one up there. <laughs> 27 plus 12, we're going to break apart the smaller part, which is 12, into one group of 10 and two ones. One group of ten and two ones. We're going to then add the tens just as we have been doing. Starting with the larger part, adding this one group of ten and seeing that whoop, throwing markers is not good. Seeing that, oh I almost pushed it in. Uh oh. 10 plus 1 10 is equal to 3 tenths. My ones remain the same for now. And that is that 7 ones didn't do anything. 
stays the same. My one stay the same. So now, when writing my second number sentence, to put the ones together, I'm going to start with my part that has my group of 10 counted. My group of 10 is counted. And then I'm going to add how many ones. Good. We're going to add the two ones that were there. So seven ones plus two ones is equal to nine ones. What about my tens? Did anything happen to my tens? No, they stayed the same. They're waiting their turn. They've already been accounted for. All the tens have been counted and collected. We just need to write the final answer, which is that. 27 plus 12 is equal to 39. 27 plus 12 is equal to 39. 37 plus 12 is equal to 39. Okay, notice. 29, 29. 10s and 1s, 10s and 1s. 10s and 1s, 10s and 1s. I added the 10s and then I added the 1s, putting together all of the pieces. Putting together all of the pieces. Don't worry about the lid for the marker. I know where it went. Just stay with me. Stay with me. Alright, so 27 plus 12 is equal to 39. 22 plus 17 is equal to 39. 24 plus 15 is equal to 39. Each of these conveniently had the same number of pieces. Putting together the same number of pieces. It's what do I do? Well, you do your problem set and the front side they've already set up for you with the framing for the writing of the two number sentence. On the back side, you get a little into it on your own. It's okay. It's the same process, the same procedure. You're just doing it again. This time, you have to break it down yourself and it's okay. It's okay. You got this. It starts on page 147 in your learn book. So the same place you had your application problem, your learn book, front and back. So flip that piece of paper over. Flip that piece of paper over. Do your absolute best. Don't spend forever on it. If you start getting frustrated, flustered and frustrated and you see you've been working hard for 12 minutes, stop. Stop. Okay. Remember, we are going to be working on this some together, too. So this is not your only opportunity to get it right. You can ask myself for help. You can ask the grown-up for help. So, but, like, just leave it there. And then return to the Nearpod so you can complete your exit ticket. Oh, look, I framed it for you. I even told you which part to break down into smaller pieces. That's so nice. That's so nice. So solve using number bonds. Are these number bonds part, part, whole? Or piece, piece, part. Piece, piece, part. I'm not looking to see what all the two parts make the whole. I want you to use that strategy to break one of the parts into smaller pieces. Smaller pieces. That's how you're going to solve the problem. That's how you're going to use that strategy, that skill to help you solve the problem. But guys, if you have any questions, let myself or another grown-up know, and we'll do our best to get you the assistance you need. Until later, uh... bye. <laughs>